hi everyone welcome back to my channel as always my name is Liman and in today's video we're gonna talk to we're gonna talk about how to file form I-864 which is affidavit of support under section 213A of INA first of all I am not an attorney I am here to help you based on experience I have with this form and also based on instruction that comes with this form so as you know i went through immigration process as well uh, through nvc and uh, everything went fine i did not have an att attorney i filed all the form by myself and uh, everything was approved so now let's go and start filing this form uh, before you do that always check expiration date and this one is going to be expired 12 31st 2023 uh, the first two top right the first two part right here one is for us uscis use only you do not touch it and the second one is for immigration attorney if you use one so in uh, for us we're gonna file this form by ourselves let's start here i want to uh, emphasize this right here type or print in blank ink but you can do both you can do both you can type and then if you print it and you see an error you can uh, you can correct it with a black pen or black ink do not use any color only black ink if you use any other color it will be refused so let's go started part one uh, part one it's about basis for filing affidavit of support this is the petitioner name or the sponsor in our case it's gonna be the petitioner it's Baker Robert and I am the sponsor submitting this form of support because select one i am the petitioner i failed or i am filing for the immigrant for the immigration of my relative if you do that so the other ones then apply for you one b to one f does not apply for you but if you do that you're gonna provide you must include proof of u.s citizenship or u.s national status or a lawful permanent resident status so you will see that now we're gonna go to part two information about the principal immigrant or the beneficiary so in my case last name is abdi and uh, first name is fatima uh, middle name it's it can be blank or in a mailing address this mailing address is for the beneficiary or the principal uh, or the principal immigrant so it's going to be abdi fatima street name is 110 called El Masira and uh, Siri is Kinifra. We don't have a state, we don't have a zip code, but we do have a province, the Skinifra. Uh, postal code is 54,000 for uh, Kinifra and the country is Morocco. So we're gonna go other information, country of citizenship or nationality. Is Morocco uh, date of birth we're still talking about the principal immigrant date of birth it's one zero one zero one nineteen ninety alien number yes she does have it it's because you have an approved petition so we go back to your approved petition which is right here this is mine by the way if you go the beneficiary alien number is right here i'm going to show it to you right here i'm going to zoom a little bit is right here the beneficiary alien number you're going to enter it right here i'm right here it's uh i uh i hide it it's right here a a number you go back and enter it a lot of people missed that one for uscis online account number at this point this principal immigrant or the beneficiary he does not have it or she does not have it because he this person never filled a petition for anybody else so uscis online account leave it leave it blank or you can type in a phone number is, is going to be a for, for in my example is morocco you can enter that phone number of the principal immigrant or the beneficiary so we're going to go part three information about the immigrant you are sponsoring 
So I am sponsoring the principal immigrant named in part two. Yes. If you see no, the other one they're gonna apply for us. So we're gonna escape this because if you choose part two, then you're gonna answer them right here. But for us, if this is for principal immigrant, if he has children, but in our case, we are doing it for petitioner when he has children. So it does not apply for us, does not apply for us. So part three, information about the immigrant you are sponsoring. So enter the total number of immigrants you are sponsoring on this affidavit, which includes the principal immigrants listed in part two. Just how many? It's just one, just the principal immigrant. As I said, because the beneficiary has a children within the United States, not outside of the United States. If they are outside of the state, they can account for the beneficiary or the principal immigrant. Now we're gonna go information about you, sponsor. So the sponsor, it's me, the petitioner. It's Baker. First name is Robert. Middle name you can leave it blank or in A. And, and now we're gonna enter the meeting address. It's Baker, Robert, street name, it's 105, Robert Run. Uh, city is Indianapolis. Uh, state is Indiana. And the zip code is 46221. The country is USA. 2G and 2H does not apply because we don't have in the United States. We have a state and we have a zip code. In the other countries, they have a province and postal code. Is your current mailing address is the same as your physical address? In my case, yes. If you said no, you can answer it right here. So they're gonna tell you right here. If you answer no to the item number three, provide your physical address in item number 4A to 4H. So we're gonna skip 4A, 4H. Because this one, it's already we can answer anything hey, they're gonna let you not do anything because you when you select yes right here so now we're gonna go other information country of the Messiah is USA date of birth 1990, 1990 I'm sorry 1980 uh, city or town of birth I born in Morocco it's a state or province of birth is Kenefra is the same Country of birth is Morocco. A US social security number, you will have one. I'm positive you do that. A citizenship, I am a US citizen by choice, naturalization certificate. I am US, I am US national, I am a lawful permanent resident. So sponsor A number. This is what confusing everybody. Because they thought if they are a US citizen, they don't have A number. Yes, you do. If you are a, natural, a naturalized US citizen, you do. So I'm gonna show it to you right now. You go back to your uh, to your certificate of naturalization, you will have it. This is right here. USCIS uh, registration number. It called A number, is right here. Write it down. And also, you will have it in your approved petition, which is I-797, approved letter. Is right here, the petitioner alien number. And also you have beneficiary alien number. So for now, they need alien number for the beneficiary, for the petitioner. So we go here. So it's two, 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 two. That's a sponsor A number. US, USCIS online account. You do, because you fill this petition, means you have USCIS online account. I'm gonna show it to you as well. So if you remember, you need, when you file uh, your petition, the first letter you're gonna receive is I-797C, both. The first one is the receipt notice, that's mean they received your petition, and also I-797C uh, for account access notice, it called access notice. USCIS account access notice. So they're gonna give you access code to enter to your account. But also they are signed for your account, USCIS online account, is right here. This is what you're gonna enter, this is what you need to enter. So we're gonna go back and enter it right here. So we're gonna go to the next station. Uh, next question, military services. I am currently, I'm not in the military. We go next. 
sponsor household size. This is the most confusing to everybody. I don't know why. So in, if you see part one, it's already automatically populated right here. So provide the number you answered in part three. If it does not, just put it by hand and count it. So I'm gonna we're gonna go through it step by step. So this one is gonna be automatically populated. It's one, and also one. It's yourself. That's two. Now this is what confusing question number three. If you are currently married, answer one for your spouse. You do not answer anything here. Here should be zero. Why? Because it's already right here. That's your spouse. You are sponsoring right here. So here is zero. Now part four. This is what I'm making video for. Part four. Part four. I'm sorry. Question four. If you have a dip dependent children, answer the number here. Here, what are you gonna answer, children? An example, if you have one. So the total is gonna be three. You, your spouse, and your child. And the other one is gonna be zero. 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 Even if you leave them blank, if you don't answer, if you don't answer nothing, it will be populated right here. The total is three. It's automatically. So. In case this it did not work for you, if there is a glitch, I don't know, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, I don't know why. You can just answer it by hand. You can print this when you print it, you can answer it. I'm sorry, you can answer the numbers right here. One, 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 and then count it. And then you can uh, you put the total uh, household size and you're gonna put the total right here. So it's very simple. As I said at the beginning of the video, you can type and print at the same time. That's not that's not a problem. I can leave this one blank. And then when I print it, I can answer it by a black pen. Uh, by a black pen. Do not use any other color. So I hope this will clear uh, a lot of questions that people sent me. So as I said, I'm going to repeat this again. You here, you can type and print. I can file this if it did not work for me. Print it and do it by hand with black ink or black pen. Do not use any color. So. Let's go now to sponsors, employment, and income. So I am employed as engineer, an example. And the employer number name is ATA. If you have employer number two or self-employed, this is what you're gonna answer it. This is retired day, does not work for us. Un uh, unemployed since it does not work for us. My current income is 70,000 a year. Uh, put your income right just say put 70 75 70 000. so income you are using from any other person who was counted in household size if you do a lot of people do, do that if you have a household size that you want to use and they're gonna file i a 64a you can actually right here but in our case i have nothing came i have enough income so we're not gonna use the household number and you gotta remember if you use the household number you're gonna file i a 64a that person has to file i a 64a so we're not using any household member. So we're gonna part six, sponsor employment and income. You see right here, it's already populated right here. So the people listed in item numbers 8, 11, 14, as I said, say that guy they have to complete I-64 for us, just the just the petitioner. So this does not apply 21 and 22 does not apply for us. So federal income tax 23A. Have you Fill a federal income tax return for each of the three most uh, recent tax years. Yes, don't lie in this. Please do not lie. You gotta be honestly on this. This just yes. You're gonna anyway. You, you're gonna do this in NVC. Yeah, they're gonna ask you. You're gonna upload your last uh, the last recent three years uh, of tax return. You're gonna include that. So total income now. We're gonna about your total income. So. In example 2022 I made 70,000 in 2021 I'm sorry 2023 right uh, 2020 uh, this is most recent should be 23 2020 I'm sorry 2022 here 2020 21 and 2020 so here I made 50,000 just an example and here 40,000, not 500,000, just 40,000. So this is my income. As you see, my income is enough. So I'm not gonna use anybody. So my income, it's good for people. And if you wanna check how much income you need, 
watch a video i have a video in my uh, channel go ahead and check it and see how much income you need for uh, the price when you have a more than one principal immigrant so if you did not file the taxes i was not required to file a federal income tax return as my income was below the IRS required level at an so this does not apply for us so uh, part seven use of asset to supplement income you know some people they don't have enough income right here so what they do they use uh sometime they use different assets you can enter right here for example uh checking account you know sometimes people they have a, uh, they have a good uh, amount of money in their account uh, you know their family are rich they have money so they can enter right here i see a lot of people do that so they don't work but they have money in their account so if you want to use that the mortgage also if you have a nice house that costs a million dollars you can use it or you can use any asset that you want but you're going to use it right here so in our, in our case we're not going to use this just my income is enough so as well if you use the asset from form i a64 for a household member if you want to use it as well you can use it right here so as i said my income is enough so just the petitioner we're not using anybody else just the petitioner We're still talking about assets, so we did not use that as well. So now we're gonna go part eight: sponsor contact statement, contact information, declaration, certification, and signature. So we're gonna go. Uh, please read this. I'm not gonna read it because I filed this form too many times, so I'm not gonna read it. Uh, just go to part eight. So sponsor statement you're gonna read it very carefully if you sponsor someone just want to let you that i'm not scaring you if you sponsor someone and something goes wrong you have to pay for that person for five years that person you will not use like a government help it will not be a public charge for five years you gotta remember that just when you support someone just make sure this is a good person so if you use the interpreter you can you're gonna use it in part nine or uh, if you use a prepare you're gonna use you're gonna use it you're gonna fill out part 10 it's the same thing interpreter you're gonna fill part nine so we did not use any interpreter and we did not use any prepare so we file this for the petitioner file this form by he or she so sponsor contact information so phone number it's gonna be 317 that's a phone number. Sponsor is the same thing. And the email address, just an example. That's not my, uh, that's not my uh, email address. It's uh, a b r at gmail.com. Uh, sponsor declaration and certification. Just you're going to read this. They're not trying to scare you, but they're trying to do that. You gotta if if you sponsor someone as they said you're gonna take care of that person for five years if something goes wrong. Uh, part eight sponsor we're still talking about sponsor contact information statement contact information declaration certification and signature. This is what I want to emphasize as well. Sponsor signature. Do not initial it or put your full name over here. Leave it blank for now and date it. What is the day today? It's zero five. What is that today? 520, 2023. And sign it when you print it by black ink. As I say, do not use your full name or initial. Print it and sign it by a black ink. Inter uh, we're gonna go right here. Part nine, as I said, is about the interpreter's full name. We did not use it. You can type in A or leave it blank. You can type it, you can write here just NA or leave it blank, NA or blank because you don't use any. Uh, interpreter certification, if you have any, certification, if you have any, but we didn't use any. And also we did not use part 10, we did not use a petitioner, so we're not gonna do anything with part 10, so it's gonna be NA. If you use one, you're gonna enter the information. Just in case, if you use one, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna date it and and uh, sign it when you print it. Do not put a full name of the prepare. He has to sign it with a black ink when you print it. So just uh, part 11 is additional information. 
I already made a separate video for this one if you want to add some more information. So as uh, this is the end of this video, I hope you like it. If you do, please subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell. And thank you.